Okay, so this is going to be fun. I'm going to be doing the Crooks radiometer. So I mentioned it to a friend, um, Erwell Pete, and Pete sent me back and says, take a look at this guy. He's, you know, um, Ken Wheeler. I, I know Ken Wheeler. I mean, I don't know him, but I did comment a couple times long ago, and um, we sort of went our, our separate ways. I'd like to discuss with him a, a whole bunch of things because, I mean, he's, he's, he's well-known, and he's, he's got a bunch of really strong ideas, and I like that. I have no problem with that whatsoever, but it, we need to, he, has, he needs to defend them, and I need to, to defend mine. And Pete said to me, oh, don't talk to him about magnetism. He'll eat you for lunch. I said, well, I'd like to see that. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to debate. I don't want to have fight it with anybody. I just want to discuss. Here's my evidence. Here's your evidence. Now, he's going to be showing, or I, I'm going to watch this, and I'm going to explain to you what I think the Crooks radiometer does. I'll leave you a link, or you can come up to watch his video about it. But I, I'll cut to points where he's making. And right now, he's showing with these little tiny LEDs that you can only make it just barely move with the way up to the top end, of, almost into the ultraviolet range. The, any below or down to the red, there's just no movement whatsoever. But these are little tiny clicker ones. And you need a stronger LED, you know, um, laser. Now, so I'm going to go through all that stuff. But my point is, is that the Crooks radiometer is not understood. Listen to what Ken says. And I, again, I won't, I'd like to be very respectful and um, engage with him about this because I have a lot of other things to show him other than just electricity. Here goes. More simple than a damn saltine cracker. Modern science. Oh, we've got particle accelerators in France and we've got the Hubble telescope and... Uh, We've, you know, we're so advanced. No, we're not. Modern science has still not come to a conclusion as to how the hell this works. Don't believe me? Don't give a damn. Go research it for yourself. There are thermodynamic explanations, which, you know, kind of seems logical that, oh, well, you know, if you turn it on the white, you can actually stop it, but if you point it towards the black, it starts to spin up and be like, well, it's heat. You know, black heats up faster, and therefore that's why it starts to spin in the direction of the applied light. There have been uh, mechanical explanations, uh, especially these particle idiots that think, well, it's actually light beating on uh, the black veins and, you know, pressing it, uh, like, you know, pressing against a car. See, now, this is where Ken and I parted ways. I don't know if I, he probably won't remember me, but I made a comment about light was a particle. I can show it's a particle. And I think, you know, he came down on me like, you're an idiot. Da, 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 da. I, I believe that's what I recall. So I, you know, just said, well, I'll just go elsewhere. <laughs> so, but I can show you light is a, a particle. So these are the kind of things I'd like to discuss with him. It, it, you know, I'd love to do a, a Zoom with him or something. Because I know he's got a lot of information. It's, it's not, but, but I don't think anybody else knows what light is. I can show it. I'll show you right now. Okay, my friends, if you're the type that likes mysteries, stay tuned. We're looking at light, and light and all, virtually everything in science is a mystery because everybody had to stuck stick with Einstein's speed of light doesn't change. Well, that's just not true. I can show you light right there accelerating. You see that? That's the wave, and that's the particle. The particle is accelerating. Now, I I was going to do Crooks, and I am going to do Crooks radiometer today. And um, my friend Pete sent me something. He said, "Go take a look at um, Ken Wheeler's stuff." And he's he's also done Crooks radiometer, and he's showing it, and da da da. And he says, "Don't try to go against him against magnetism. He'll eat you for lunch." I said, "Well, let's see. You know, I would love to have a discussion with Ken, but I I don't even know if he remembers or he knows who I am. But originally, when long ago, I made a remark, and and he still, as a matter of fact, in this video right here, he's saying uh, there's mechanical explanation." especially by the particle idiots like he, he doesn't believe light is a particle so and he was a smidge abusive so I just said I left him alone I haven't paid attention to him for years um, so anyway I'm gonna I, I said Pete I'll, I'll debunk his stuff I'll, I'll see maybe I can maybe I can't I don't know
but I'm going to see what he has to say, and I'm going to do that right now. So stick with me. I say light is a particle, and this I think I can prove. And if Ken would discuss it with me in an open Zoom meeting, I would, I'd be very, very happy to do that. All right, so here we go. Okay, so this is where I fell apart with Ken long ago. I tried to make a comments a couple times, and, uh, and he was kind of abusive, so like I say, I backed off. But here's my claims, and this is what I'd love to Zoom with him about and discuss it, you know, cordially. And this goes back when I first got out of the Army after working in the Nike Hercules missile sites. I said that the transfer of energy all energy is light to atomic vapor. Light is literally atomic vapor. What does that mean? Atomic vapor means it congeals into atoms, and atoms turn into molecules. Molecules are matter. All right? And I said there are only two types of, of intermolecular forces. There's dipole-dipole of reactions, and there's polar and nonpolar molecules. And I mean, I did a lot of this stuff. I, I'm not an idiot here, my friends. You know, this, and this goes back, and I've done it all my life, so, uh, you know, I mean, and I've done it a lot. As you can see, it's been worked on for many, many years. And now, since I found the um, light research with Rod Warren and I did, I can actually show that these particles are particles and they are dipoles and there is nothing but dipoles and light makes everything else and there's a certain number of these particles in a proton which is I, I have the whole thing laid out now a friend of mine Oscar Rosales is is setting it up and I have another friend here um, Paul Amatucci who is putting out the books about electron flood theory, you know, dipole electron flood theory and all that stuff. And of course I do the mud fossils, but I found virtually nothing is correct because of the way they're teaching everything. And he's just saying, this is what I was told to tell you and you just say what I told you and you'll be good to go, but don't make waves. And the same thing with Einstein. Nobody can talk about the light slowing down. That means that they're saying there's a bazillion miles away all these galaxies are because light never changes speed. That means it's slowing down. That's what the redshift is. Now, I'm gonna hopefully Ken and I can have a discussion about this. Maybe we can get somewhere with this. He, I'm sure he's got stuff he can help me with. And I got stuff maybe I can help him with, who knows? But I, I don't wanna be called an idiot because I, I believe in particles because I'm showing them. All right? And again, I don't, I don't want to be disrespectful. It's not that my, that's not my point. I'm just showing you these are particles. And here's, here's the green ones. All right? And which are, these are photons. They're made of two dipoles, back to back. And apparently he knows a lot about magnetism, so maybe he could help me with magnetism. But here's, here's the red ones back-to-back -back dipoles, and these are the neutrinos gaining value, and, and they are particles. And you can strip the white off and end up with just the black, and then you have have a really, that's when you're in your gamma rays and all the electrons are stripped away. Once you hit the ultraviolet catastrophe, you basically lose all your electrons and all you have left is a black. And you can accelerate that up until it becomes just absolutely deadly. Okay, so I slowed this down to 75% because he talks a little fast for me. But here he's talking about nobody can understand the Crookes radiometer, and I agree. It, this is one of the hardest things I've ever had to figure out, and I still don't know if I have it figured out. Maybe he can help me. I don't know. But here's what he has to say. Car or something. Thermodynamic explanation, black body radiations, um, force explanations, um, pressure explanations. This device has been around for a long time, this Crookes radiometer. Science has still not figured out how this works. I, however, have, and I'm the first person in the world who has. And the reason I have is because this fat bald tattoo freak you see in front of you, you know, who is a genius, chess champion in high school and college, 
translate ancient Greek for fun. I literally wrote the book on magnetism and I'm the first person to accurately tell you what light is. It's a coaxial circuit. It's not merely transverse electrical and magnetic. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ken. This is just a word salad. Can you show me what light is? As I can show you. So let's just keep going. It has a longitudinal dielectric. <laughs> In Mother Nature, she's a really, really simple gal. Okay, she's not an insane cr uh, hooker on crack, as quantum mechanics would have you believe. She only understands two core principles force and motion and inertia and acceleration. The entire universe is resistance, capacitance, permeability, magnetism, permittivity. Uh, again, can show me the particles or not particles. I, whatever you can show me, that's what I want to see. Because I can show you exactly what I'm saying. All right, again, I, I, I don't want to be disrespectful, but here is light. This is light. This is light from a pulsed red laser. And we're using CMOS to pick this up. It's just fully understand, uh, understood. And that's the particle, and that's the wave. And it is a particle, and the particle actually is fission and fusion right here. The black and the white separate. And these are the same particles they find at Fermilab. These are the two particles, but we see them here in light. They use gigantic things, smashing them together, so they just get bits and pieces. We can actually see the particles. Of course, this is red, which is, is very weak, and it spins very slowly. And this is the green, which is very powerful compared to the red, and the blue is off the charts. And that's why when he was using the, the higher colored lasers, um, they, it would move the, the vein just a little tiny bit. But he didn't have, had, just had no power. There's no, there's no push to it. And he said, oh, in mechanical, there's no particles. Well, these are the particles. And the stronger they are, the pushier they get. And I can prove that as well. So I'm not just making all that word solid statements. This is a green and a red coming through the same orifice lay, um, uh, venturi at the same time. The red just gets pushed out of the way. It's just not strong enough. The green, pew, get out the hell out of the way. And it reconcusses his way out there. So this is not this is not nothing. I'm showing the particles. And this is it before it accelerates. And all of these are other particles that are in the air, heat particles or light particles or gases. They all have magnetic fields, every one of them, because they are particles. And when they get pushed out of the way, they glow a little bit. So that's my evidence. Now I'd like to see what can, and you can see the blue is you know, very, very fast. And this is light before it accelerates, as it's accelerating. These are the particles. This is coming at us, showing the Higgs fields. So, what Ken's got to show, I'd like to see, and his writing the book on magnetism, well, I'd like him to read it to me, and we'll see if, what we agree on. Boy, I could, I could see this would be a fabulous debate. <laughs> you know, listen to this now. Yes is 100% correct based upon everything that I know about magnetism, which is complete, and everything that I know about light, which is also complete. Uh, there's no such thing as a speed of light, it is a rate of induction. The maximum rate of transverse uh, field phenomena through a medium. That medium, of course, being the ether. There's no such thing as warp space-time, Einstein was incorrect on this. There is no premise to back this up. I agree 100% on that. And I also know that there is no empty space. There is no empty space whatsoever because light is particles and light is moving from everywhere to everywhere else. It's atomic vapor. It's the vapor in space. It's the ether. So uh, I'm going to just see what he has to say about the Crookes radiometer. I'm going to go on to my own statements about the Crookes radiometer and see if maybe I can get something out of what he has to say. All right, but I would love to have that conversation, Ken. If you're a real scientist, my friend, I think you will agree and we can present our evidence 
you know, you know, head to head, basically, uh, respectfully. I don't want to d- discount your abilities. I'm, everybody's telling me you, you're a, you're a, a guy with a lot of ability, and I'm sure you, you you understand a lot. So maybe I understand a little bit. We can help each other. Who knows? All right. I love you all. Thank you, Ken and Pete. I'm going to show you what I have to say about the crooks, and um, you see what you think. All right. I love you all. Bye.